On October the 31st, 1517, Martin Luther posted 95 big questions which he believed faced the church of his day to a local church door in Wittenberg, Germany. 500 years later, I decided to post 95 new questions, one a week, to the web, questions which I believe the church must face in the 21st century. For it's by grace you've been saved, through faith. And this is not from ourselves, it's the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. That's what Paul states in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. But when you really stop to think about it, the traditional understanding, as we call it, of these words reveals more than just one circle that's very difficult to square. For starters, how exactly can we be saved by grace through faith? We're either saved by grace or we're saved by faith. It just can't be both because they're not just different, they are mutually exclusive. Grace is a free gift. There's nothing that the recipient can do to deserve it. There's, it's nothing to do with their merit or their effort. On the other hand, faith is very different. Faith as we've said over the last few weeks, has everything to do with our own ability and effort. In the end, it's a giant work. Grace through our faith, surely it's about one or the other. Grace or our faith, it's either a free gift or a huge effort. But there's another issue. If, as Paul appears to suggest, this faith is not from ourselves, it's the gift of God, things get even more complicated and murky. Faith becomes something that you're either born with or not. And there's nothing you can do about it. You either have it or you don't. So therefore, you're either saved or you're not. And as John Calvin, one of the most famous Protestant leaders, was clear, all this is preordained, decided beforehand, a gift or not from God. So, you're either born in, saved, or you're born out. And if this is true, then why is Paul bothering to do all that writing, preaching, teaching, and traveling in the first place? The dice have already been rolled. You can't change it, like it, or lump it. Accept your destiny. Just suck it up. It's an awful, depressing, fear and panic inducing muddle. Only those with faith, enough faith, the right kind of faith can be saved. Which means that some people are doomed from birth because God never gave them the gift of faith. There's nothing they can do to rescue themselves because saving faith is this gift from God. And the fact that they don't have it is because God has chosen not to grant it to them. Therefore, they're damned. And this is what Calvin's followers came to label double predestination. But what if not only does that little New Testament Greek word pistis that we've looked at over the last week or two mean faithfulness rather than faith, just as I've suggested the vast majority of scholars now understand, what if the faithfulness that Paul is talking about in the two verses I quoted from Ephesians, is Christ's faithfulness rather than our faithfulness? What if, rather than reading this statement the way that it's so often been translated, in context it should actually be read, for it is by grace, undeserved, unearned love, that you've been saved through Christ's faithfulness. This, of course, is not from ourselves. It is the gift of God. It's not by our works so that no one can boast. Not only does this suddenly all make huge sense, it also leads us onto another piece of Paul's core language, but we'll get to that next week. For now, a simple question. Which interpretation of Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9 makes most sense to you? For it is by God's grace that you've been saved through your faith. And this is not from yourselves, it's a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Or 
It is by God's grace that you've been saved, through Christ's faithfulness. And this, of course, is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's not by your works so that no one can boast. I say much more about all of this in my new book entitled The Lost Message of Paul, which is out now. You can order your copy from openchurch.network slash lost message of Paul.